اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فما لهم عن التذکرۃ معردین کنہم حمرم مستنفرہ فرت من قصورہ صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح علی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدم السان یفق قولی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ The verses which I have recited is from Surah Al-Mudathir, chapter 74, verse number 49, 50-51. Allah says, فَمَا لَهُمْ عَنِ التَّذْكِرَةِ الْمُعْرِدِينَ كَأَنَّهُمْ حُمْرٌ مُسْتَنْفِرَةِ كَأَنَّهُمْ حُمْرٌ مُسْتَنْفِرَةِ فَرَّتْ مِنْ قَصْوَرَةِ What is the matter? with these disbelievers why are they running away like wild donkeys as fleeing away from a lion this verse in the holy quran is talking and referring to the concept that muslims has to be like the lions If they are not doing so, it means something wrong with them. You see, if you go to the tafsir explanation of these verses, Ibn Abbas anhu, he says that the word qaswara in Arabic is referring to the lion, cat family with the mane. Like a man with the beard is like a cat with the mane, becomes like lion. So do not get mixed up with tiger or something else from the wild animals from the cat's family. You see this, these verses, the way they came in the Quran, You see the context. Allah is basically giving some rhetorics, an example that this Holy Quran is like a lion and these kuffar disbelievers are running away or will be running away from this book till doomsday as these wild donkeys are fleeing away from a lion. This sentence is exclamatory, like interjections, exclamation mark away from the lion. You see, you need to understand one thing. Muslims has not been or had not been rather into the matters of apologetics as we see today many of the Muslims have become. Islam has nothing to apologize to anyone. It is the deen. It is the way of life which supersedes all other way of life. Bulldoze them. Nothing stand against the Quran. But it is us who has let this book down. Had it been for us to do our work optimally, proactively there wouldn't have been any issues in the world you see when Allah revealed this book it was our job to proselytize and we did so far in the past but the momentum has been reduced into this era the era we are living in there are many several factors most importantly the materialism, fitna dajjal the commotion and the trials of Antichrist. People indulge themselves into world, love this world, don't worry about akhirah, this is everything, on and on. So Allah is telling you in the Quran that, oh Muslims, you are lions. And these disbelievers, either they like them or not, palatable to them, They will be running away as 
the wild donkeys are running away from the lion as fleeing away you see the word allah used here flee not run because running could be many you know matters you can put many things into running maybe the animal runs away from from some kind of strategic plans you know prey and predators they always do these kind of tittle tattle in the wild in jungle but here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fleeing when you say flee flee does not approve any kind of strategy flee means that you are scared terrified petrified and now you're running away for your life subhanallah so as these kuffars are running away from the lion as the lion is approaching them you see in the entire holy quran you will never find anywhere the word lion with the proper noun except this verse you see we have many words to say lion in arabic asad is very famous but here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the word qaswara which one of the disciples of prophet muhammad is elaborating that this qaswara is the lion the cat's family with the mane you know arabs in the Jazirat al Arab, in Arabian Peninsula, there were no lions. So it was cleared out. God is telling, the Creator is telling about one of His creatures or creations that this one of my creations is very brave, and that is the lion. And now we don't need to prove that. Lion is the king of the jungle. Muslims should act like that. Alama Iqbal says, بہتر ہے شیر کو سکھا دو رمے آہوں کہ باقی نہ رہے شیر کی شیری کا فسانہ it is better to teach the lions the walk and the style of a deer so they must forget the legacy of their self themselves or theirs you see lions have the legacies from the beginning since their creation they, they are strong bold freshest animals active animals they are always predators, not prey. So, Alama Iqbal is telling that what these disbelievers want Muslims to become, that they should become and adopt the life of a deer, but inwardly, whatever they want to say themselves, oh, they are lions, it's okay. So, better hai shir ko sikhado rame ahu, ke baki na rahe shir ki shiri ka fazana, in ka masla ki ye hai ke naqis hai kitab ke sikhati nahi mom in ko gulami ke tariq. خود کو نہیں بدلتے قرآن بدل دیتے ہیں because they want to change the Quran why? because Quran does not let you bow down to any system خود بھی غلام دوسروں کو بھی غلام they themselves have the slave slave mentality and they want you to become slave like them and then say everything oh though you know the circumstances we are living in you know those circumstances do not allow us to do things you know excuses lame excuses retreating back and just blaming the time itself because of your own weaknesses it is better to teach the lion to run and to fly like a deer so the lions get their legacies forgotten and this is what happening what is the purpose of canine teeth ask the lions let them eat grass inko khilao ghas let them eat grass so they forget their legacies what is the purpose of canine yes we used to use our canine teeth but now we don't want to eat it's not my appetite anymore. I would like go, I would like to eat grass, rather meat. This is what Alama Iqbal says that be whatever you want to, but inwardly you will just like deer. Whatever this you think, you know, the attire and the body and the skin you have, you Muslims, your Quran says that you are lions, no problem. Be like that, but you should make sure that the lion should adopt the running and the style of deer. Muslims, 
when they say kalima this means that they should not be afraid of any entity except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see islam had never been into apologetics from their point of view it made other religions to apologize we don't need to apologize to anyone we should not be afraid of anything islam is destined to master everything not to intimidating or into intimidated by any concepts no that's not the purpose of islam islam was always lived with dignity with integrity this was the muslims who brought this thing down jesus christ said that this the liver the, the little leaven leaveneth the whole if the little amount of yeast does not ferment the loaf there is something wrong with your yeast something wrong with your loaf he said by the fruits ye shall know them do men gather grapes from the thorns and figs from the thistles so good tree will reap the good fruit and the bad tree will reap the bad fruit whatsoever you sell so that shall you reap so what was the concept all this about when the whole of the nation does not do anything everything goes down with it in the past muslim were the nation which did everything collectively and allah gave them by the fruits ye shall know them judge them the whole nation by the fruits so when the tree when the fruits when you are doing these things not right whole of the the things and the fruits will not get you any benefits if you sow something right with the true methodology of holy quran and sunnah everything will come up right so we can judge you with the fruit past nations in islam were judged by their fruits now unfortunately we have lost the right seed for fermentation that is why we are confused hosts of inferiority complexes ambiguity dichotomy confusion why this happens because the true methodology has been lost prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the last people will rise again with my methodology meaning it means that something is in between the methodology has been lost we have to revive it it is the revival now we have to do something out of it to do further initiatives the main message of this today's lecture is once we revive our true legacy what quran says that we all are lions then everything will come upright if we adopt the style of a deer or the wild donkeys then it's your fault it's your thing before you know the critics uh, let me add something over it you know some critics they might object that lions where they eat you know they attack these donkeys where they find you find donkeys there you see the quran the word quran uses is himar her humurun is plural and it can denote uh, denote to donkeys or the wild donkeys but if anybody says that okay show us where the lions you know eat these donkeys you see wild donkeys we also consider zebras but in case any nut case comes and tells you you see i watched the documentary of david david ottenborough you search about lion attacking donkey yes normal donkey not the wild one so you can see that the way it goes the video is there it means lions do attack which supports the holy quran second thing it is you know amazing and fascinating verse that allah uses donkey as a prey and lion as the predator lion we can understand you know lions are these are the king but why allah picked donkey allah could have picked many other animals from the kingdom because lions they attack every animal buffaloes the most of it you can watch you know documentaries buffaloes and any mammals which have you know which have those uh, horns mostly lions attack but it's an amazing situation 
that Allah just picked donkeys. Why? You know why? Because donkeys are the animals which are so helpless when they are being attacked by the predator. They cannot defend themselves. That is why Allah picked it to show how miserable and helpless these kuffar are against the truth and the magnitude of this book, Holy Quran. You see, when you see the attack of lion is attacking these deer and other animals, they do some kind of, you know, they show some, show some signs of relentness or they, you know, they try to defend themselves somehow as drowning man clutches that straws. So they do something, whatever things they have to protect themselves or they come in a group or on and on. But you see when these donkeys are being attacked by the lions, mostly Linus, she attacks. You see, you can watch the video, how helpless, or even the lion when attacked for the territory, how helpless the donkeys or the zebras are, even they all group together, won't help anything. This is the situation and what we have become. Why? dunya wa krahiyatil baut. Prophet said, the time will come to you that people will eat you as just like inviting people for the supper, for the dinner or for the treat, feasts. And you all will be there and everyone will come to and eat you. It happened in the past in the World War II after that colonization. People are discussing about the maps of the Muslim nations. Who? Those Western people, they are discussing how we going to manipulate what you know, territorial and boundaries Muslims would get or would get and they were deciding it like this chunk is mine, that chunk in my chunk is mine and this is not something I'm telling you out of my pocket. This is the history books even taught in the schools and academics. Not, I'm not going so far to get some other things from the other tools or some secret societies. This is something very common and open to the history. You see, decisions were there that this land, you know, Italy, Italians controlling Libya, British mandate all over the place, everywhere in the Middle East to continent to the Levant, even India subcontinent, British ruled for how many years, 100 years, and they came by the excuse or the pretext of India, East India Company, that we want to do some trade, things, spice, other things, industries, on and on. What did they do? They come and they take unfair advantage of those people and they captured India around 1850s and then till 1947 they suffered. Radcliffe, he divided India subcontinent into the way of so weird kind of division and then he put the consternation and all this contentment into that region. People fought, killed for the, this population of this migration. The highest population of migration happened at that time when Radcliffe deliberately he divided India into such a position that he put India in the middle, those crocodiles, and they put East Pakistan, which now be Bangladesh, on the other side, West Pakistan, which we have now. So they know it that sooner or later it's going to split again, which happened, unfortunately. So British mandate was everywhere and Swiss Canal held by the Jews, sponsored by the Jews, to, to help the backup and they removed this old sand and made the Swiss Canal and because of the reason why it was so made people don't really know that why it was made the reason why they made it because British Spanish these were explorers Portuguese British, Spanish French Italians and on these uh, British they had to go all down all around with them down of the good hope of South Africa by meeting those Somalian pirates, then reached to India, Vasco da Gama. He did it. So they said, we need to find another way. And that was Swiss Canal coming from the top from the Europe, going crossing that small part of it from Egypt, going down to the Red Sea, then going down to other Indian Ocean and reach to India. Easy way out. Bring those guns, powdered by the Chinese, do the job or, or you know, did the job. So British mandate was everywhere. Everything was everywhere. All these things were happening. This is what Prophet says. It will happen to you. Then Sahaba, Sahaba, Ajma'in, all of them, they said that 
that oh prophet muhammad sallam is that the reason that we will be you know less in number so prophet says no you will be more in numbers the problem will be that you will be indulged in a disease by the name of wahan so this some this word was something new for the muslims so they asked ya rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is this wahan he said hubb ad-dunya wa qarahyat al-mawt that you will love this dunya and you will detest death and that is why allah will remove the terror and the fear from the hearts of the disbelievers and then they will attack you wherever they will find you they will kill you you can see the situation in the past when the muslims army the when the kuffar they hear that the muslims army is coming of course they were doing injustices the kuffar land they get terrified by the by the steps the sounds of their horses and now muslim is ready to get killed he's standing there and the guys coming to kill him. no fear nothing why because prophet says you will love this dunya and you will detest death and allah will remove the khauf the fear from the hearts of the disbelievers and then they will do whatever they want to do with you and you will be so helpless like the you know the upper part of the layer of the flood you will be just like that and the the way the flood goes and the upper part of the skin or whatever i don't know what you have but you can say that the upper part of the flood that's the way you will be so my muslim brothers and sisters wake up you see at least we should do something call these disbelievers into the house of islam talk to them act like the lions what is happening to us where the world is going what happened to these muslims now the men especially the stature is not right idiosyncrasy is not right the way they talk the way they walk the way they have the fashion everything is look like feminine what is matter what is the matter then no beards on the faces they want to just be like grecians those greeks those homo these homosexuals these uh, what you call in the past these sodomites what is the matter with you what is the matter with us the men especially why we have become spineless why we have this you know castrated what is the reason emasculated this is not the job for us at least men should act like men and women should act like women and i see women here they want to be like men they want to participate in everything of things now which men used to do it you can't you see the whole world is something going to end naturalism and this is what this shaitan says four places and five places in the holy quran there is a mukalma correspondence of satan with god when god created adam in surah al-hijr it came in surah al-a'raf it came chapter 7 chapter 15 many places in surah al-baqarah it came you know when shaitan said to the god almighty i will not bow down to adam because i am made from the smokeless fire and ana khairu minhu i'm better than him and he is made from this dust then allah says okay you get out you enemy of god get out from this these these things and then go to the world and you know what satan said that time give me the respite till doomsday and you will see i will make your people ungrateful in gratitude allah says you won't be able to do the mukhlasin the one i will pick them or i have chosen them you will never be able to distract those people or make them go astray because i have chosen them you know what he said that he said i will change their nature i will change their nature and i will allure them into the worldly love that is why allah says in surah al-hadid chapter 57 verse number 20 that this all world is amusement and a mere play everything is fake this is shaitan makes you that it is everything is real so love this world as much as you can from your heart now you understand the point here this is the shaitan who want who promised god i will change the nature now what is the nature man is born woman is born through their sexual activity another child is born reproduction this is the natural process because this is normal you cannot help yourself without that is a natural thing instinct of human beings so what is the unnatural thing that you make something which is odd which is taboo which is unnatural unacceptable sick perversion 
and this is what shaitan did it now these lgbt or whatever this uh, acronym these people are boasting around that this is the right thing it's, it's our you know right it's our haq and we are born with this propensities lie it's a lie subterfuging bamboozling to the rest of the world that you are born nobody is born with the propensity of homo being homosexual nobody is born with the propensity of being gay this is all made up propaganda to support you know you need something to clinch on to just support your ideas with those rational explanation but inwardly those are all irrational explanation nobody is born with those kind of dna structures here you adopt them you adopt them in the way because the way your upbringing is you live with those those homosexuals the girl is living with seven brothers she will act like a tomboy if those you know if the girl the seven girl sisters and one brother he will act like another like a woman this is what happens because the upbringing is all incorrect if your upbringing is right nothing will happen this is all the point here if your tree is weak everything will weak will be weak if the head is corrupt the body will be ruined this is the simple thing and the system of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you eat junky food your body will become junky you read junky stuff your mind will become junky it's not a rocket science or the <clears throat> or calculus integration or some kind of things which you need to solve it it's not like a problem solving issues this is simple 101 and we need to wake up where the world is going but this is what satan promised god that i will change the nature of the human beings and most of the people you will find those who will who will be in gratitude to you kufura they will be in gratitude they don't will they will never listen to you they will not listen to you then allah says then i will throw them into the hellfire with you on the day of judgment and on the day of judgment satan will say to oh allah I always worship you. I always worship you. I just try to, you know, mislead these people. And it's their fault because they were so low in their moral values. So punish them. Even shaitan will reject you on the day of judgment. And now you're talking about the human rights, equality, <laughs> equality, gender and all that stuff. Open your eyes. What are you talking about? What is happening to you? Why the man is not acting like a man anymore? You see, this is what's happening to us. Allah has created our glands in our body. You see, they secrete hormones. There's something glands in your brain, in your body, in the midsection, everywhere this gland. There's a gland by the name of pituitary. This gland controls things in your body. There's a gland in your testes, which controls of your man stuff. You see, when you are acting like a woman, when you see every time the woman thinks and that's the man is acting like, like a soft, like a jelly, what happens to you? Your body, your, your, your brain produces chemicals. Why Prophet said that they sit with the good people in the good community? You are raised with the community of soldiers, you will act like a soldier. You are raised in the community of those marshmallows, you will become one of them. Spartans in Greece, a child is nine, six years, by a guy, a child is nine or six years old, they throw them into the wilderness to fight with the wolves in the snow. Then they become, what? Spectre of wars. You see, this is what happens. And nowadays, if a child has a small prick, the parents get worried. Oh, what happened to you? Oh, so, so my, my son, my sweetheart, my this, my that. You see, we have made them so... We have made them like this. Can't you see what we are doing to our children? We are making them so weak, fragile, like a woman. So little wonder they become and act like a woman. But it does not mean that they start beating your kids. That's not my point. I'm saying there is a way to rear them. You see, rearing is the most important thing. How you develop upbringing, rearings, these are the most important things when the child is growing. In, in psychology, we are being told that we have three stages, imprint stage, then you have your, uh, what you call socializing stage, then you have another stage. These three stages are the most important with the imprint, the most fundamental stage. Then you have the middle stage, then you have socializing sta stage. If these upbringing, the imprint stage is not right, 
Remember that the middle and the last stage will not do much good for you. So this is the message to my viewers and listeners. Allah has made us the lions. We should act like one of them. This, these fitna which we are facing all around the world, you cannot escape that. This is the part and the test with Prophet Muhammad Wasallam says, the signs of the Yom Al-Qayyamah and this is we have to face. But how we have to face? Through the right methodology of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you don't do it, if you find your own way, your own guide, your own sailor, your own course, then sooner or later, your ship will sink the way the Titanic sank. What was the reason? The, re the creator of Titanic, he boasted that I have made something of titanium. Even the God cannot, you know, sink it. This is what we are doing. The way we have become, we think that we are on the boat is so strong that even God cannot move us. That's it. We are gods ourselves. Everybody is a little Fir'aun, is a little Pharaoh or a little Nimrud. Everybody is a little God by himself or by herself. We control our body. You are nothing. We are nothing. We are so insignificant. We are so helpless. We cannot control our heartbeats. What you're talking about? You see, in medical, we are being told that we have two types of nerves, systems. One is involuntarily muscles or involuntary nerves or another is voluntary. You see, we have some things in our body. We cannot even control our body. Intestines. Can you control your intestine? Can you tell your stomach, do not digest this food? Can you tell your eyes that do not make your pupil or the lens short and wide when the light is on your eyes? Can you control it? No, you can't. Can you control your heartbeats? Your brain of the compartment is controlling brainstem, cerebellum, all these uh, parts of your brain. They control respiratory when you're sleeping. They control your balance. Can you stop them? No. But you want to stop the whole world and you want to challenge God that God, you do not exist. We exist. So anyways, this was my message to my viewers. I hope this is the enough eye-opening message. I want my viewers and listeners to understand one thing that Islam and Muslims are not apologetics. We are not. If you make Islam apologetic, then the destruction will be coming to you near foot because you are the one who deserve to be destroyed.